and then you don't bother the neighbors and you don't attract the animals. The pile also should be monitored for temperature. Temperature, as I've said, is um, a product of the microorganisms and we're monitoring temperature both as an indicator of the health of those microbial communities as well as a reassurance that we've effectively destroyed pathogens. So it's important that you keep track of, of the temperature uh, and so you use a thermometer like this just to indicate to you uh, what you've got for a temperature and, and to be sure that it's cooking. This is 160 degrees and, and this, this temperature is, is at the upper range of good, good composting. This is excellent. So you, to make the biology heat up itself to, to get a temperature that high, you've got to have the right amount of moisture so 55 to 65 percent moisture. You've got to have the right amount of carbon and nitrogen and that can be in a range of anywhere of 25 parts carbon to one part nitrogen up to 40 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. Uh, and by volume maybe that's three brown parts to one green part and your nitrogen rich materials would be your manure, your fresh feed, and obviously your carcass. The microorganisms to effectively heat up and break down the carcass and all these other materials need to have enough oxygen to, to do their respiration, to, to breathe, so to speak. One of, the, one of the ways people get in oxygen is by frequently turning their piles with a bucket loader or some other implement. In the case of carcass composting, turning could open up that fresh carcass and release a lot of odor. So carcass composting is different in that way where you tend to build a static pile where you build it once and cover it and leave it for as long as three to six months without ever breaking into it. And then maybe if it still has some clumps or chunks or whatever, you can turn it several times before it gets loaded in the spreader for field application. My name is Tom Gilbert. I work for the Highfields Institute and I run programs for the Institute. Highfields is a nonprofit organization working in Vermont and New England to provide services, educational opportunities, and research programs to farmers in soil health and on farm composting. When you're looking for a site on your farm to compost the livestock mortality, it's critical that you pay attention to a number of things. A livestock mortality composting site should be anywhere from 150 to 200 feet from surface waters. Um, often a separation distance of 200 feet is suggested as a preferred distance simply because it is further uh, and in certain applications would be a wiser um, distance to choose. In most scenarios 150 feet should be sufficient for separating that animal from water sources that it might contaminate. Composting the animal does still require separation distance from a property boundary, um, but is only specified at 100 feet. Composting the animal in, in the bay as opposed to in a freestanding pile gives us some benefits largely uh, that we're working on a small site here and have a lot of other activities going on. And so it allows us to actually work with a smaller footprint uh, that won't be quite so wide at the base and is a little bit easier for harvesting later because we have a wall in the back to push up against and pull material out. Developing infrastructure on the farm to actually compost the carcass is not necessary and can be done absolutely fine without constructing bays of this nature. While the construction of infrastructure on the site for composting the carcasses is unnecessary, it sometimes can be convenient. This, these bays were constructed with waste blocks from Carroll Concrete. They were actually donated by Carroll Concrete for the purpose of helping advance this practice in the farm community. 
And so for us, they were an easy medium to work with because they were free. Although similar bins could be constructed with large posts and two by sixes, assuming that it was sturdy enough that a bucket wouldn't push through the, the two by sixes. In establishing a pile, whether it's in a bay or in a freestanding pile, the processes will be the same. We're going to start with a 24 inch bed of wood chip. The wood chip allows, the wood chip is very porous and it will allow for air to move between these particles very easily as opposed to a finer material like sawdust or silage that will pack together and will not allow for air to penetrate. This chip is actually quite wet and as a result you'll see we'll be integrating a substantial amount of dry matter under the carcass to absorb moisture. It's difficult in the field to assess the moisture content of wood chip because it is such a large particle and it's not quite as absorbent as smaller finer materials like shavings or sawdust. However, a chip that feels very wet in your hand and is visibly wet, although it may not be dripping, has basically reached its saturation point. As a result, you'll need to integrate a more absorbent material to absorb the moisture from the carcass. While the wood chip is a critical component to adding carbon to the pile and um, managing some of the moisture in the pile while also creating pore space for air to move in, uh, it isn't a great source of dry matter for absorbing all the uh, liquid effluent that's going to leave the body of the carcass. Carcass, just like a human, is uh, very, very high in moisture, is mostly blood and water, and so we need to provide dry material in the pile to absorb that as it's leaving the, the carcass. No matter how dry your chip is, it has a limited capacity for absorbing that moisture. And so these shavings will adequately absorb free moisture coming from the animal, and we'll lay a a thin bed of about six inches of, uh, of the shavings beneath where the carcass is going to lay. The steps of, have it, of managing all these materials, the shavings and the wood chip, may seem like additional steps that make this a difficult or cumbersome activity, but again, if, if the activity is properly planned for, this should be able to happen in, in a very short period of time. The best way to do that is to make sure that you have a source of wood chip on site at all times and preferably a source of the, the shavings or sawdust on site at all times.